In this video, I'm going to walk you through the start to finish process I used for creating the seamless wire wrapped ring with no soldering. Unlike most of my wire wrapped projects, this project does require some fairly careful measuring in order to make sure that the sizing works properly. The ring that I'll be creating in this video will be a size 7. A size 7 is about 55 millimeters around the finger. I went ahead and measured 57 with my calipers, adding 2 millimeters to give me enough room to add the wire that will be coiling our square structures together. You can find the ring size in millimeters by a simple internet search. For another size, go ahead and just add two millimeters to your total length for your measurements. The core of our ring shank for this project is going to be built out of 21 gauge square. To prepare my square for this ring, I do want to go ahead and make sure that the ends are snipped as flush as possible. So I've taken my flush cutters and squared off that end. <coughs> then I can use my calipers to measure that wire. Again, making sure that I pin or that I snip it with the squared off edge of my cutters so I have two squared edges ready to connect together. Now that I have the first square and it's cut properly to size, I can go ahead, make sure that I trim the ending off of my length of square wire, and I can use that wire as a measuring tool so that they're exactly the same length. I'm going to go ahead and cut two more for a total of four wires. Once I have all four of my square wires, it's time to start forming them into the circles to make the ring. My favorite pliers for this are these half round pliers that have one rounded edge and a flat edge for the outside. In a pinch you could use round pliers as well, but these pliers just make it slightly easier. I'm just pinching and adding just a little bit of a bend to the wire as I go. Now that I have our wire bent into the relatively rough outline of a circle, I can go ahead and bend it back out so that the tips of the square are touching. From here I can go back with my pliers and adjust it to make sure that it sits in a more proper round shape. This can take some fiddling, but it's worth the effort to get it right before diving into the ring. Minor imperfections to your circle are okay, but the better circle that you can build, the easier it'll be to get this ring to come together. Now that I have one done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for our other three wires. Once I have all four of my wires set, I'm ready to move on to the next step in the ring. I went ahead and cut three feet of 22 gauge half round that I'll be using to coil the whole thing together. About two inches from one side, I went ahead and put a kink into the wire so that I can wrap the shorter side first and then move on to the longer side. Wrapping the shorter side first instead of starting all the way at the end just makes it a little bit easier for me to hold 
all four of the rings together as they're in the early stages. Next I'm going to align my rings so they'll sit with the, with the opening in the four points of the compass. So I have a north, this one will be east, this one can be our south, and this one our west. From the side, it should look something like this. It's okay if the, if the squares don't sit perfectly flush towards each other on the areas you're not working on. As you begin to wrap our half round around this, we can correct that as we go. We do want to make sure that wherever we start, all of the squares can sit flush and parallel to each other inside that coil. One of the questions that I get asked in almost every video is, is this a technique that you could use with round wire? And while it is technically probably possible, making a ring like this with only round wire would be incredibly difficult and would definitely suffer some structural integrity. The square wires sit more precisely inside that center coil that we're about to create, whereas the round wires would shift and move, making it incredibly difficult for the ring to be finished and to stay finished once completed. Let's go ahead and start coiling our half round. Taking my shorter end, I've fed it through the rings in between the gaps for where we have a break here and a break here. And as tight as I can without causing the squares to fall out of alignment, I want them all to sit as flush in this coil as possible. I'm going to wrap that shorter square wire through, just pulling it tight each time. Once I've got it around a few times, I can go ahead and take my pliers and flatten that half round to the surface of our squares. That will force them to sit a little bit nicer inside of our coiled structure here. Each time that I go through, I'm just going to go ahead and add another pinch just to make sure that we are keeping our squares properly in alignment. Now that we've gotten close to the end of our shorter half round, I am going to go ahead and trim just a little bit more off of the end and pinch it so it's tucked in towards the inside of the ring. I want it to go no further than across two of the squares. That ensures that we'll have a perfect little edge for our long ending to connect to once we get around the outside of all of our squares. Keeping that seam on the inside of the ring protects it from being unwoven as the hand catches on things throughout the day. When done properly, it shouldn't create any edge or catch on the inside for the person's finger as well. Let's go ahead and weave the rest of our long half round through the course of the ring. And this can be a little bit tedious and definitely the most time consuming aspect of the whole ring. I'm just feeding the half round through and when I get it to the end, I want to make sure that I'm pulling it tight. And then back through the ring again. Every one or two stitches, I want to go back with my pliers and just make sure that it's flattened to the surface of the ring and that our squares are still sitting properly. 
when I approach my first square break, I'll walk you through the process of making sure that that break is hidden and secured. We're about one stitch away from our first square connection here on the left. When we get to this point, I want to be very careful not to over pull the tension on the half round. I want to make sure that it just feeds through the ring as evenly as it has the whole time. I want to make sure my squares are lined up properly and just coil right over the square like I would any other section. Now that our ending is in the coil, I'm going to go ahead and do two more stitches around just to give it a little bit of space and then I'll go ahead and flatten with my pliers. There we go, we've successfully covered the first seam in our squares, and we can move on to the next one. I went ahead and wrapped my half round through the band up to the next point for our square. Our next connection is the second from the left, and the process is going to be about the same. Feeding my half round through the ring, making sure that I keep proper tension, and working as I go. Now we have the square ending covered. I'm going to go ahead and do one more. Before I can pinch it. And then I'll go ahead and wrap the next length up till our next square here. All right, and we've come to the point. I've wrapped around, so this second from the right here is going to be our next one to be covered in the coil. Process doesn't change, just nice and simple. Keeping proper tension on my half round so that it's nice and even on the edges. And then wrapping as I go. I went ahead and just wrapped around right up to the point where we're just underneath our final join here on the right. And we're very close to completing the ring. And just like that, our final join is covered. Nice and simple. At this point, you can even feel that the ring has fairly solidified. 
splitting those uh, endings across the compass, make sure that for the most part, there's always something keeping it to size. The ring itself is pretty resistant to being stretched out of size. Let's go ahead and finish it up with our last few coils. Once I have all of the coils on the surface, I'm going to go ahead and cut that ending short and pinch it to the inside so it should end butted up against our first wire snipping. You can barely even tell that there is a break in the wire there. have our finished ring. A special thank you goes out to all the names on your screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I'm doing would not be possible without their support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, Follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. This helps me a lot with the visibility of my videos in YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.